Welcome back to the Sum for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today we are going to continue the journey in learning MKR and we are going to touch on outputs, MIDI channel, and a little bit also on additional editing controls and also a little bit on polyrhythms. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. We are inside AUM. Let's click on the plus sign and let's create first a MIDI channel and then an audio channel. And there is a reason why I'm starting from scratch because I want to show you the connections. So let's click on the plus sign here. Let's go to audio unit extension. Let's load a ground piano. Now let's load as a MIDI processor MKR. So let's search for it. There it is. Now let's create the right connection. So we click here and we choose MKR and we choose output number one. Now we go back and we ensure that where it says filter here and there, you see this is filter for MIDI channel, they are all active, we click none and then we select one. So that means that uh, this audio channel will receive only uh, MIDI um, events from MIDI sources that are transmitting on channel number one. Okay, we click on the plus sign again, another audio channel and then we click on the plus sign again and let's search for ISIM. And then um, we load it and then we establish the connection again. We choose the same output port number one. Actually, no, let's go for output number two. And we leave the same channel one as filtering. Okay, so again, audio channel number two receives um, from um, NKR output number two, but MIDI channel number one still. Let's create another audio channel again. And this time, let's um, actually search for, let's select electric piano here from Apesoft. And let's make the connection. Again, this time we connect it to MKR output number one, but this time we go for filtering on MIDI channel number two. Okay? So the first two audio instances uh, here, Grand Piano is on channel one. The uh, ISM is on channel one, MIDI channel number one. And the third one is on MIDI channel number two. The uh, first one is on output one from AKR, as well as the third one, but the sync one is on output number two. Okay, let's open up MKR like so, and let's maximize the screen. Let's create some notes uh, some, um, on the first lane like so. Now I show you that you can click and hold on a note or on the lane moving up and down to transpose. There is another way. So click on this note here, click on the right hand side here. It gives you the ability to cut, copy step, clear step, and also paste step. And if you select the entire lane, it gives you the same option for the lane. Now move to the next um, set of option here, click again that particular step. And now you can transpose it up and down by a semitone or 12 semitone. So let's go up by a number of semitone, like so, E4, we go to the next one, we go up to G4, like so. The next one, we go up by an octave. Let's play. Nice and simple, right? Now, if you click again here on the right arrow, it gives you other option. And these options are to move, uh, um, for example, if you select the lane, you can move it down, or you can move it up, or you can move it to the right side, or to the left hand side, which is really nice. And this is not destructive. Let me show you how, what I mean by that. So let's go uh, further up. You have additional option here, like panic button. One that I really, really like here is the lane view name. You can see the name are, it says name one. If I click on, on that, it says group. You have the grouping now. Click again, you have output, port, and channel number as well, which is really nice. Okay, so let's say that um, I move again forward, again forward. Now I've selected that lane and I copy it. And now you have paste lane active. Let's go to the second lane and we click paste. Okay, now let's make the first lane a little bit different. So we add the additional note like so. Now, if I select that particular lane and I go forward here for this option and I move it down, you see, they have swapped, which is really nice. They're not destructive. Up up again, so they're swapping. And that is quite a unique characteristic. I haven't seen it in a lot of um, a step sequence. Now, let's go to the edit panel here. And I want to show you additional um, options. So here on the left hand side, you can again transpose up and down by 12 semitones or one semitone. Similar option to what we've seen on the panel up here. Okay, but then here you have three different selections. The first one is for the output port. 
the second one for the channel, and the third one for the number of steps. Let's start with the first one. So we're going to um, select the first lane, and we're going to say output number two. If you recall, on output number two, we have ISIM. So let's click play. So practically you have now the first two audio channel playing. So lane number one is playing ISIM, lane number two is playing the grand piano. And so, and this demonstrates you can set the different output ports by lane, which is really, really nice. Now let's put this back to one. So we have both lane, both first two lanes on output port number one. So if I click play, you hear only the piano. Now let's change the MIDI channel on the first lane to channel number two, but the output port is still number one, and let's click play. So in this case, the first lane is playing the uh, third audio channel, where you find the electric piano because it is using MIDI channel number two. Okay, so this is a, a great way to actually separate how you can control different uh, AUV3 instance inside AUM or other host using different output ports and also using different channels. So that is really, really great. Now, let me show you something else as well, which is really, really unique. And let me put this back to channel number one so we can hear only the piano. Okay, perfect. Now, the both lanes have 16 steps, right? So we have the first lane selected and we can add another step. So it becomes 17. And we add another note there and let's go up an octave and then go up again. We go to G5 like so. Now, the first lane has 17 steps, the second lane has 16 steps. Because they, they have different steps, you will find that when the loop restart for the for the lanes, they will not be any more in sync. And therefore, you can create some very interesting polar events. So let's try. Eventually, it will resynchronize as it moves through repetition of the different lanes, as you can see. One final uh, thing I want to show you as well. If you select one lane, you can also change the step here. You can say instead of 16, we are going to have uh, uh, one eighth as duration of notes. So let's click play. So not only we have different steps with the different lanes, but we have also different notes duration. So you change the, the corresponding step to the length of the note. So on the first lane, you have practically one eighth per, um, as a duration of note for each step. On the second one, you have one sixteenth. So again, you can create very, very interesting variation using all those different options. I'm going to stop here. I hope you enjoyed the short tutorial and as always, see you next time. Bye.